Right now at six, several brush fires in Fairfield County are keeping firefighters busy this evening. What fire officials say caused the flames ahead in a live report. Plus an absolutely gorgeous start to the weekend here in the Midlands, but make sure you bring a jacket if you're heading out tonight. Details on clear skies, but chilly temperatures. And it's game day in Nashville. USC women's basketball closing in on another SEC tournament championship. A preview of tonight's semifinal matchup with Georgia in a live report coming up. Live, local, now. This is WIS News 10. Thanks for joining us. I'm Emily Scarlett. Right now, several brush fires are under investigation in Fairfield County. Multiple blazes were reported just yards apart on Highway 215 this afternoon. Our Jenna Cisneros is live on the scene this evening, speaking to investigators for more details. Jenna, what do you know so far? Yeah, Emily, right now I'm on 215 South, just about two miles away from the Richland County line. And so far what I'm told is that there's been about eight to 10 miles worth of fires just spread out on this road, just driving up here. You could smell it, you could see it. Um, however, firefighters have been working since 215 to put this out. Now I'm gonna bring in Jason Pope and he's going to tell us a little bit more. He's the fire chief here in Fairfield County. Now we were told this is intentional. So what do you, what's going on with that? Yes, we do believe these fires were intentionally set uh, and we do have our local law enforcement uh, with they have some tips and some leads and they're working on to try to determine this. So it is under investigation. So do we have any suspects involved right now? Or? No, not that I know of, uh, but they're they're definitely taking the leads and, and working this from the sheriff's houses. And, you know, driving up here, I saw some mobile homes. I know that there's a power plant in the area. Is anyone hurt? What's going on? We're happy to report nobody was hurt. Uh, there were no homes destroyed. Uh, there are some campgrounds in the area. You know, campers were destroyed. So we owe that to some quick action for a lot of uh, volunteers around here really quick who did some really good work to make sure none of those homes were destroyed. I'm so glad to hear that. And I know that there's some dry conditions going on now. Do, are we expecting this to spread or uh, is the cold temperatures going to keep it underground or? No, we, uh, the Forestry Commission has been on site. They've been a great help today. Uh, they won't leave here tonight until the fire is contained, which that means there's a break around it. Uh, so they won't go anywhere tonight. Uh, there may you know, be some, some small uh, fires inside the break tonight, which that's not anything to worry about. Uh, they'll be contained before we leave here tonight. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking with us, Jason. Now, again, 30 firefighters have been present on scene since 215, working to put out these fires. Now, as they learn more information, we will have that for you both on air and online at WISTV.com. For now, we are live in Fairfield County, Genesis Narrows, WIS News 10. Thanks for that, Jenna. Well, nothing but clear blue skies across the Midlands today to start the weekend. Despite all the sun, though, temperatures were still a bit chilly and tonight be prepared for just outright colds with lows in the 30s. Meteorologist Kevin Arnon has a first look at your forecast. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, we're going to be talking about temperatures and getting down into the mid 30s overnight tonight. So certainly going to need that jacket. And really, we're dealing with these brush fires because of the wind out there and the dry conditions. So uh, with low dew points as well. So it's really going to be an issue right through the day tomorrow as well with this wind finally though relaxing as we go into the afternoon. Now satellite radar view, plenty of sunshine out there. Uh, again, we're going to be dealing with some clear skies overnight tonight. The wind though, however, still gusty from the north and that's something we're going to be dealing with overnight tonight. So temperatures, we did make it to around, let's say 64 degrees right now, 62 Lexington, 61 Columbia, about 60 in Orangeburg. These temperatures are going to be dropping like a rock through the evening. We're going to go right through the 50s, eventually into the 40s and into the 30s as we go into early tomorrow morning. Morning. Now the winds, not as bad as what we saw earlier. Still pretty breezy though from the northwesterly direction, anywhere between about 5-15 miles per hour. Again, finally tomorrow morning is when the wind finally does relax. You can see the gusts as we go through the evening, anywhere between about 5-15-20 miles per hour. And then as we go into tomorrow morning, that's when we'll see winds anywhere between about 5 and 10 miles per hour. So there's some good news for us. However, tomorrow temperatures are only making it into the mid 60s, where we should be for this time of the year. We do have much colder weather on the way in that seven day forecast. Emily, we're going to have that coming up over to you. Thanks, Kevin. March Madness is in the Music City tonight. USC women's basketball looks to make it back to the SEC tournament championship game for the fourth year in a row. Sports director Rick Henry joins us live from Nashville this evening with more on the scene there ahead of tip off. Hey, Rick. 
<laughs> Hello, Emily. Hey, the Gamecocks cleared a big hurdle last night when they beat the Tennessee Volunteers to advance to the semifinals of the SEC tournament. You know, the Volunteers, they won both regular season matchups with USC, but Carolina's All-American forward, Asia Wilson, did not play in those games because of injury and illness. This week, she's been battling vertigo and wasn't cleared to play last night until right before the game. Now tonight, Carolina takes on 19th-ranked Georgia, a team USC beat by 12 last month. A win tonight puts Carolina in that conference championship game for the fourth straight year. And coming up later in sports, we'll hear from Asia Wilson and USC head coach Don Staley. Reporting live from Nashville, Tennessee, Rick Henry, WIS News 10 Sports. Thanks, Rick. New at six. Four thankful homeowners tonight after volunteers across the Midlands worked all day to make repairs. The nonprofit organization Homeworks has been providing free home repairs in the Midlands and throughout the rest of the state for 20 years now. Today, about 80 volunteers came out to build a new deck for one homeowner, a two time cancer survivor who just celebrated her 82nd birthday. Jean Mack says she's speechless after finally receiving the repairs she needs to live in a safer home. The director of Homeworks tells us this is also a great way to give kids an opportunity to learn new skills while giving back at the same time. Being able to see the face of that homeowner that they've touched, that they've come into the life of someone that they didn't know and have brought a ray of sunshine, a ray of love and some joy and the connection. And, and that's what life is all about. Nearly $1,500 were donated to repair GMAC's house. If you'd like to donate, we have a link posted for you on our website, WISTV.com. We now know the name of a motorcyclist killed in an early morning accident in Lexington County. Officials say 33-year-old Charles Mengedote died at the scene on Longs Pond Road. They say he was traveling west just after midnight when he ran off the side of the road and hit a ditch. He was not wearing a helmet. The White House went on security lockdown this afternoon as Secret Service agents investigated a report of shots fired. The Secret Service says a man shot himself outside the White House and medical personnel rushed to the scene. President Donald Trump was in Florida at the time, but is scheduled to return later today. The Secret Service says the shooting took place along the North Fence line of the White House. Reports say it appears no shots were aimed at the White House. The man has died and officials say there are no other reported injuries. A 19 year old student at Central Michigan University is in custody this evening, charged with shooting and killing his parents inside a dorm room Friday. James Davis Jr. is accused of shooting and killing both of his parents at the dorm after they had picked him up from a hospital Friday morning. Campus police say they took Davis to the hospital because of erratic behavior. Police say the gun used in the killing was registered to Davis's father. The suspect was arrested without incident just after midnight after a day long search that involved more than 100 police officers Friday. Coming up on the news at six, hundreds of USC students are putting on their dancing shoes all for a good cause. More on today's USC dance marathon underway now on campus. Plus, be sure to bundle up tonight. We're looking at temperatures in the 30s overnight. A full look at your forecast right after the break.